This drone used to fly about 4 minutes. With a few tweaks, we increased that to almost 12 minutes. I will walk you through the process we use at RC Benchmark to choose a better motor, propeller, ESC and battery combination for this quadcopter. Hello, I'm Charles, co-founder of RCBenchmark.com. The optimization process is a loop, but we need to start somewhere. So we have to start by making some assumptions. First, let's assume that the drone already flies. So you have an existing design from which you know the weight and the battery size. As an example, I will use the Otis development quadcopter, but this method is applicable to any multi-rotor. Additionally, we will optimize a multi-rotor that is mostly hovering. Our quadcopter has four propellers, four motors, four ESCs, one battery, a frame and a payload. This quadcopter can currently fly four minutes. The propellers are probably too small and there could be a better motor for this propeller. The first step is to understand how a drone can fly and take off. The rotation of the propellers allows the drone to rise and maintain flight. At hover, the combined thrust of the propellers is equal to the drone's total weight. From this assumption, and with the weight of the drone, we can deduce the thrust required by each propeller to achieve a stable flight. Here, our drone weighs 770 grams with the Otis tracker, so we need a total thrust of 7.6 newton to hover, or 1.9 newton per propeller. The Otis tracker is used to keep the quad hovering automatically in the same spot. To keep a good control authority, the maximum thrust achievable by our propeller should be about twice the hovering thrust. Keep in mind that this is just a recommendation. Racing quads will have a much higher thrust to weight ratio. In summary, we're looking for the most efficient propeller at 1.9 newton of thrust that has a maximum size of 6 inches and that can achieve 3.8 newton of peak thrust. We can vary parameters like pitch, size, propeller, material, and brand. What do we exactly mean by efficiency? A propeller converts mechanical power to thrust. The efficiency is then thrust divided by mechanical power or thrust divided by torque and rotation speed. Usually, we perform tests on a dozen propellers, but to keep this video short, let's focus on only three propellers, a Gemfan 6030, a King Kong 6040, and a Gemfan 5040. Here, we're interested in measuring data on thrust, torque, and rotation speed. The thrust depends only on the propeller. So no matter the motor you choose, the thrust will be the same at any point. We're testing the performance of the three selected propellers using the Series 1585 thrust end. The test can be done manually or with a script. In this case, I use the database upload feature of the app, which performs a test and upload the data for me automatically. We can now plot the mechanical efficiency of the propeller as a function of thrust. As shown in the graph, at 1.9 Newton, the best propeller is the Gemfan 6030 at 0.077 N per watt. We rule out the two other propellers as they have a lower efficiency. The Gemfan 6030 is the most efficient propeller at 1.9 newton and generates 0.0184 newton meter of torque at 1300 rads per second. Now that we found the propeller, we're looking for the most efficient motor at the same operating point of 0.0184 newton meter and 1300 rads per second. In this video, we will limit our search to two different motors, but in reality, there are a lot more candidates to choose from. I'll test the Multistar Elite 2306, which has a KV of 2150, and the Emax RS2 2207, with a KV of 2300. I'm using the same process as we did with the propellers to measure and upload the test data to the online database. This graph shows the mechanical efficiency of the tested motors when they are equipped with the Gemfan 6030. At 1.9 newton of thrust, the efficiency of the Multistar is 68%, while the efficiency of the Emax is 60%. Thus, we conclude that for this specific propeller at hover, the most efficient motor is the Multistar Elite 2306. Another thing we must check is that the motor is also capable of generating a higher thrust for sufficient control authority. Remember earlier we said that we're looking for the most efficient propeller at 1.9 newton of thrust that can also achieve 3.8 newton of thrust. 
By looking at the graph, we see that the motor is capable of generating a maximum of 3.8 Newton of thrust. Once the motor and the propellers are chosen, we can select a suitable ESC. For now, we just pick an ESC capable of delivering the motor's peak current of 7 amps with a safety factor. We choose the Afro Race Spec Mini ESC, which supports 20 amps. We could test multiple ESCs and vary their parameters, but this is out of the scope of this video. Now, we have everything to calculate the flight time. The flight time is calculated from the motor and the propeller efficiency and the total weight of the drone. You can use the Google Sheet linked below to calculate the flight time. Something important to note is that two factors oppose each other to maximize flight time. A larger battery carries more energy, but it also increases the weight of the drone, which decreases the efficiency of the motor and the propeller. As you can see in the graph, at some point, increasing the battery provides almost no increase in flight time. Using the spreadsheet, we calculate a new flight time of 8 minutes. Not bad. If we increase the battery size to a 3S with 3000 mAh, we can obtain 30 minutes. In practice, the flight time will be 1 or 2 minutes shorter, because the battery voltage is lower under load, and we don't want to over discharge the battery. In summary, we started with design specifications for the vehicle and estimated the weight and thrust. From this, we selected potential propellers, tested them, and chose the best for our application. After, we tested two motors with an ESC and found the most efficient one for the selected propellers. Finally, we used the test results to calculate an estimated flight time based on battery specifications. In general, we will have to iterate on this process to find the optimal propulsion system as we may have to change the initial assumptions during the process. All this process can be done manually, but to save time and obtain high quality results, you may be interested in checking out our tools which can test propellers from 4 inches all the way up to 47 inches. You can also check out our free database that can be used to analyze your data or to search tests done by other users. We wrote an in-depth article on the material covered in this video. The link is below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and bye-bye.